Hello and welcome to this episode of the Print Mind Over Matter. In the last episode, I had mentioned that this is like a two-part thing where we are talking about the relationship between food and mental health. To tell us more about this, we have with us somebody that you've watched previously where she was telling us important things about OCD, Dr. Shambhavi Jaiman, who's a psychiatrist. And uh, actually, today's topic is interesting because I learned recently that eating disorders is probably one of the biggest causes of mortality in psychiatry, which was a fact that I was completely unaware of. So Shambhi, let's start with that. Is it true or is it just a Google thing? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here again. Mm. Uh, so the thing which you mentioned just now, you know, the eating disorder and the mortality rate, it is actually true. Right. It is okay. actually true because in eating disorder, when we get into the details, I'll tell you more. But eating disorders, there are certain eating disorder where the person starves themselves to such an extent that there is a lot of imbalance in their body with regards to you know electrolytes they are not eating for days together they are not drinking for days together and that causes a lot of problems with their heart with their electrolytes with their fluid levels and that can lead to mortality in the sense that that can lead to them getting hospitalized because of it because their nutrition is off the charts there's nothing which is there in their body which can sustain their body in the way it should be so definitely eating disorder is one of the things which can really impact your health and is one of the major causes in psychiatry, we would say, for mortality. Okay. So actually, uh, I just wanted to give a quick snippet here. My um, idea about talking about eating disorder actually came from this show called The Good Doctor. And there's an episode where it's a mother who's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who has an eating disorder so much that, like you mentioned, she's hospitalized and she's a child who cannot understand what the mother is going through. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think that was the episode, for me at least, uh, as a lay person, mm -hmm. that brought out how scary and how um, how it's a big, big issue. Because I think sometimes we tend to dismiss the relationship between food and mental health as mm -hmm. not important enough, mm -hmm. and especially with eating disorders. So I just want to share that it is like, uh, Shambhi has already pointed out, it's a major cause of mortality. But before we move to mortality, mm -hmm. can you tell us, are there types of uh, eating disorders and are there any particular reasons why these emerge in somebody? Correct. So uh, when we talk about eating disorders, there are definitely types of it. Eating disorder is basically an association between our behavior, between how we uh, perceive ourselves, our image and the relationship with us eating. Right. So when we talk about eating disorder, there can be multiple types like something called as which you would have heard mm. anorexia nervosa, right. bul bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder and there are multiple others. But the most common ones are anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. Now, when we are talking about what is the difference between all of these, uh, the difference is between uh, how we perceive us in the sense the body image. That is a ma okay. major uh, component of it. Basically, in an anorexia nervosa, there's a lot of starvation which we do, which uh, is linked with how we perceive ourselves. Even if we are in the normal body weight category, in the normal BMI category, we perceive that no, we are fat, we are overweight, we are obese. We don't look a certain type according to ourselves and we starve ourselves to maintain or to attain that particular sort of um, body image or the body weight which is normal according to us hmm. right it's not what is normal according to the norm in bulimia nervosa what happens is that there is um, there is sudden eating hmm. there is sudden purging is what one does and there is sudden um, um, sorry I need to take this again so in bulimia nervosa what is it is that there is sudden eating there's sudden binging and then there is a guilt associated with that and that guilt leads to compensatory behavior which can be either using laxatives for you know um, uh, removing the kind of food which you've put in your body vomiting mm. you can use um, you know things like excessive exercising you can do uh, inducing vomiting even with your hands so a lot of times when patients who are struggling with eating disorder come with uh, come to us uh, we also do a physical examination. One, like I said, that it is very, very important because their physical, um, you know, uh, parameters are off the charts. Two, they have a lot of things which can be seen in their physical sense as well. Like in bulimia nervosa, if they are purging in the sense of inducing vomiting, they will have marks on their knuckles. They will have marks on their teeth because they are vomiting so much. The acid which is coming out will lead to certain marks on their teeth. Okay. So. Anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder, these are the various kinds. They are almost the same with slight differences between how they are, um, you know, uh, manifesting in a person. Achha. Okay. 
So coming to that, because you mentioned binge eating, now mm. again, uh, I feel like that's a term we use very, very like binge watching. Yeah. You know, we use very loosely binge eating. Yes. So I want to know when do you think mm. like because we also we all have a tendency of saying, oh, I you know, binge. through the weekend yeah. I binge it a lot of things. I binge watch. So mm. what is that marker when it stops being this category of loosely used term where? Maybe for a day you just ate too much mm. till you couldn't breathe. True. To when it becomes a recurrent problem, like you said that, you know, to the extent that I immediately feel so much guilt. Like obviously we all feel guilty mm. when you've eaten too much of dessert, you've eaten too much of biryani, yes. whatever it is, right? And we like, oh, kal se nahi and whatever, right? But I'm sure there's a point where it becomes a problem, right? So how does, uh, how can that be identified? So one, the consistency of the symptoms. So okay. like you said that, you know, once in a while we will also eat a lot and mm. then we will feel guilty that today we have eaten more, today we have eaten heavy, today we have eaten more sweet. Mm. The other thing is that when it starts interfering with our functioning. Right. The third thing here is that when um, it is either causing problems with our physical health or causing problems with our mental health. Now with mental health, an eating disorder can also lead to other kind of disorders okay. which is anxiety which can lead to depression so it's not that it is only going to restrict to eating disorder and you're not going to have anything else so obviously when it starts becoming more consistent when you're doing it on a regular basis for prolonged periods of time mm -hmm. when it is causing um, you know it is hampering your functioning it is causing distress in your life in your personal life social life uh, when it is causing physical health issues, biological problems, then it is called as a disorder. Then is uh, when we say that, okay, this is binge eating disorder or yeah. it is anorexia nervosa or it is bulimia nervosa. So these are the three components we need to keep in mind before we uh, say that, okay, we have binge eating disorder or we have anorexia nervosa, etc. Okay. Um, so I remember at least uh, the first time I encountered the word anorexia mm. was in, in context of a model, I think at some point where you know, she felt like she was not fitting into that kind of look that she uh, had to mm -hmm. have. Um, and I remember it was an international model. And then there was a lot of conversation. I think there was a time when Karina Kapoor uh, wanted to get into size zero. And there was this huge, uh, massive, but there was the other prof side of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like where the body image, I think, crept in because she fit into a size zero. And then there was this ended up creating a flip side because a lot of girls then wanted to become a size zero. True. Uh, forgetting that she has done it through like a trained dietitian and trained people who are there mm -hmm. and you know women who are looking and trying to get into a size zero are probably just arbitrarily stopping food right. certain foods are bad certain so uh, I wanted to know what what impact does this have uh, even if I don't have mm -hmm. let's say necessarily an eating disorder the kind of impact where it comes to having a lot of diets where we just completely become restrictive mm -hmm. like uh, I'm asking about a fine line maybe mm -hmm. I don't have a disorder yet but my behavior is sort of tending towards that because I started restricting foods as labeling them as bad mm. altogether. Mm. So, yeah. So, a very good question actually. You know, there's a very fine line between, you know, dieting and dieting funnily or, uh, uh, you know, very uh, interestingly is one of the reasons why somebody can develop an eating disorder right. if they're vulnerable to it. Right. So, there can be multiple causes for eating disorder like, uh, you know, you can have a genetic aspect to it, okay. where there's hereditary playing a role into it, the neurochemicals and the neurotransmitters which is playing a role into it. If you have that vulnerability and like you said, if you're in a scenario where you're trying to fit into a particular body type, mm -hmm. you're trying to excessively lose weight or change your body type, uh, you know, excessively, then it can actually induce or actually be the onset of an eating disorder. But again, like I said that, you know, eating disorder is going to be when it is consistent, when it's causing a lot of distress in your daily life, personal life, professional life, and also when it is causing physical uh, health abnormalities. Mm. Like you said, dieting, dieting is something which is done under supervision, mm. right? If you're excessively restricting yourself, you're avoiding food to an extent where it's harming you, where it's causing more problem than benefit to you, mm. then it's something which can eventually lead to an eating disorder okay. but dieting in supervision controlling your food eating in moderation is what i would say i wouldn't even use the word dieting eating in moderation and taking care of your health is something which is a totally different thing it is under supervision it is not something which is harmful to your health right actually i could be wrong here but i i'm getting a sense that mm. probably that this could be more common in women than men or am i wrong no absolutely <laughs> absolutely right uh, the stereotype of, you know, uh, right. 
the body image you have mm. to be a certain body type you have to be a certain body weight you have to be a certain body type at a certain age right um you know if you're above that then there are a lot of comments there are a lot of uh, uh loosely used words which are uh, used in the space so definitely it is something more commonly seen in women because mm. one they are exposed to more of body image you don't see when you're you know you, when you're talking about um, the media when you're talking about the kind of uh, image the stereotype which has been made um, it is funnily it's more towards the females it is more towards uh, you know the uh, females coming into advertisements female coming into magazines they are given more importance the female the women have to be a certain type the men might not be that type but it's okay mm-hmm. so there is obviously a lot of societal pressure there are a lot of societal norms which play a role here um even genetically there's certain inclination towards women having more of eating disorders so both of these things play a role in women having more of eating disorders okay um so let's just come into the indian context because again uh, i think a lot of times when we talk about mental wellness mm-hmm. or you know disorders we somehow assume western concept right ye to bahar hota hai hamare yahan nahi hota but i feel like at least generations of women have had habit of restricting themselves because of whatever i mean sometimes it's not even just like body image i feel like it's sometimes how the family will look at you if you eat too much mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. are you so greedy you's mm-hmm. not you like women are supposed to be you know epitomes of sacrifice and self sacrifice to so the greed Mm. there's greed that is understood uh, when a woman is eating too much or mm. if, if she likes a certain food item i, I feel mm. like that's also part of our culture unfortunately mm. yes. so do you think that that is also equally a problem that this is also a big problem in india because within our cultures we have such stereotypes in place for women that mm. nutrition is a major issue for women i mm. mean you know any you know data we are going to pull up we are going to understand that you know mothers are under you know malnourished children mm. are malnourished and it comes to women automatically that disparity because of how we look at men and women mm-hmm. or the you know the uh, lack of equality in a lot of spaces food becomes there and then there are also this disorders like let's say for example if you've grown up in a household where mm. you're told that ladko ko itna nahi khana chahiye mm. and let's say you get to a space where you're walking and you can eat mm. but there is that guilt in your head that you were told and you were eating so i was just wondering right if i if that is a big part in a country like ours I think environment definitely plays a role into you know one developing a certain kind of illness be it a physical illness be it a mental illness and when we are talking about um, eating disorder this sort of you know bachpan mein kafi log they use very cute nicknames ye motu hai ye chotu hai Yeah. they fight you don't understand at that point of time that it's going to impact their yeah. psyche it's going to impact their psychological uh, you know growth right you just do that out of love at that point of time and eventually it starts when they are say in their teens in their adolescent ad- early adulthood then they start developing symptoms and then you go to a, a psychotherapist and you know you speak about what had happened in your past childhood experiences and then you realize that okay these are these small small little little things which were causing these kind of problems and like you said that in a lot of cultures i wouldn't just say indian culture but yes it is more prevalent because we're more exposed to this particular culture right now um i think it's it is definitely a thing that you know you're restricted that okay women should do this or women should not do this or eat this or not eat this this is good for your health mm. eat more of this and that comes with just not just eating it also comes with appearance that okay do this do that mm. uh, do not do this so mm. it's 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 i think environment definitely plays a huge role and it's not just the physical environment it's also the social environment you are in mm. and the kind of culture which is propagated there the kind of culture which you've grown up in which impacts your psychological health and eventually can or cannot result in you developing some sort of a mental health illness not just eating disorders okay i actually bring back sort of the last bit is coming back to the mortality question mm-hmm. because now i at least i'm trying to understand and uh, that the mortality would mm. is the most horrific end to somebody's eating disorder right but i'm wondering if that also happens because most of the time we don't see it as a disorder if maybe the person themselves before they come for help i was wondering do people come like uh, for help with eating disorders like mm. what is what is sort of the percentage or some number that this many people come in because i feel like if it is so embedded in mm. our language and culture mm. and society i feel like it could be very difficult for a person or sometimes even an immediate other person to mm. understand that this person is not you know in terms of dieting let's say whatever this person is calling mm. as dieting is actually a problematic behavior or relationship with food mm. so i was wondering what does that look like 
so uh, yes the when we are talking in terms of eating disorder uh, tina you, we need to understand that you know anorexia nervosa is can is something which can be really severe mm. it is something which can uh, go to an extent of somebody getting hospitalized like i said yeah. uh, it can lead to mortality as well but you know when we are dealing with somebody who's suffering from anorexia nervosa the people around will definitely know about the okay. eating disorder because it is to an extent that you know they're severely not malnourished uh, they are not functioning well in their lives whereas uh, in terms the initial bit of it mm. yes it can be missed at times i'm not saying that you know as soon as it starts you can identify and you can take the person uh, most of the times most of these people who are experiencing these kind of symptoms are hesitant to go to a doctor because they're so um, you know fixed in their mind about the body image they want to maintain and attain that they feel that this is not a problem and i don't need to do anything about it it's the family around who sort of pushes them or coaxes them to go and seek help when we are talking about um, bulimia nervosa which is another uh, eating disorder yes the symptoms can be missed a lot of times because uh, the malnourishment is not as physically overtly seen okay right whereas mm. in anorexia nervosa you can see it overtly that they are very thin they are severely underweight mm. whereas in bulimia nervosa the body image is not uh, as that of anorexia nervosa so a lot of times it can be missed again like i said that it is not the person who's suffering with these symptoms who would want to go ahead and take help for their symptoms so uh, a lot of times it goes on till say late teens or you know late adolescence even early adulthood that they keep struggling with it but um, i think it's important to understand that most of the times because of their dysfunction in their uh, you know um, other spheres of life in their professional life in their personal life in their academics uh, usually it is picked up Okay. but again even if it is picked up it's not something which they feel that okay we need to go to somebody they start you know eat more ye khao wo khao itna kam kyu kha rahe ho force feeding the child or the adolescents um obviously the stigma around mental health comes into play that uh, this is not a mental health disorder it is not a lot of awareness is not there you know mm. you see it but you don't just you don't even acknowledge it you just feel ki bachcha theek se nahi kha raha hai ya the early uh, you know the um, young lady is trying to fit into a certain body image and that's why they are dieting you see it like that but you don't see it like it is affecting their health and it is affecting their life in general and you need to go to a doctor or you need to go to a psychologist so mm-hmm. definitely stigma is a major contributor here to uh, people with eating disorder not getting the treatment yes there are certain differences between the eating disorders where it can be missed and can be diagnosed slightly late uh whereas uh, there are some eating disorders where they are quite early diagnosed and treatment is not given to them okay so um this is the last question really but how is the treatment done because like you said there is already a stigma the person already yes. feels like they don't want, need mm-hmm. help right mm-hmm. and let's say let's the family has taken them so they are already in denial that i don't need help or even if they want mm-hmm. so if there is a a uh, relationship that's already skewed mm-hmm. with food right so mm-hmm. how does the treatment work then to let's say lead this person to have a better relationship with food so um when we talk in terms of the treatment of eating disorder we need to understand that it's a very holistic cohesive sort of an environment which we need right. to provide to the person who's suffering from an eating disorder um therapy plays an integral part of the treatment now when we talk about Uh, therapy psychotherapy that is talk therapy mm. um something called as cognitive behavioral therapy family based interventions are really really important when we are talking because you know you are uh, they are the environment which is going to be there with them mm. you are not going to be there with them so they need to be included in that environment to sort of help them understand that how can we change this um Uh, relationship of this person with food mm. and what are the various ways in which you can do it uh, what are the various things which we need to sort of uh, acknowledge from their childhood experiences in order to change their thought process towards what their relationship is currently so family based interventions uh, obviously other types of psychotherapies are extremely important also medications and the medical aspect of it like i said that you know eating disorders um a person gets affected physically quite a bit 
So I mean, managing their electrolyte balance, managing their uh, weight, managing their uh, other uh, systems in terms of their cardiac system is very, very important. So evaluation is the first step. You understand where, what are the lacunas where we need to focus on. Obviously, the regular uh, eating disorder treatment, which will include medication to an extent, therapy very very important the medical aspect of it where you involve uh, say a, a medical internist you involve a gynecologist a lot of times eating disorder can also lead to a lot of gynecological uh, disturbances so looking at the evaluation you see what are the things which you need to include in and like i said that it's a cohesive thing so it needs to go hand in hand not that okay fine we'll um, you know uh, assess the psychological aspect of it and treat that first and then the medical bait and then the uh, something else whatever is involved so it is very important that it's all together and it it, it is a cohesive thing where you need to have a medical internist who's there obviously a psychologist and a psychiatrist who's there a gynecologist a dietitian a nutritionist is very very important because when we are trying to develop their uh, relationship or improve that relationship which they have with their uh, food or eating habits uh, a dietitian is a must because they need to tell that how can you if you suddenly increase the mm. uh, intake of the food it can lead to other physical health disorders so that's why a dietitian is required to step by step increase their appetite to help them in increase their um, you know uh, portions of food and uh, that's how the treatment of eating disorder basically takes place okay uh, shambhavi i think has shed light on something that often gets missed because of the kind of uh, again language and environment we have uh, around food uh, in our lives we all love to call ourselves foodies we all love to talk about how indians love their food but sometimes there are like these issues that exist and thank you so much Thank for you. making it so comprehensive for all of us and you can also try watching that episode actually i'm not promoting the show <laughs> all i'm saying is uh, it was a really really helpful episode for me to understand at least that eating disorders are uh, real are matters of real concern and we should not dismiss if you see people uh, around you who seem to be struggling in the relationship with food at least be a support system to them if nothing else thank you for watching this episode of the print mind over matter do subscribe to our youtube channel and also follow us on our social media handles <laughs>